Supplements are another very important and controversial topic when it comes to your health. In an ideal world, we wouldn't really need any supplements. We would get all the nutrition and vitamins and minerals and nutrients that we need from our food, especially if that food predominantly comes from the earth and is real food nutrition. Even if we're committed to eating in a very healthy and nutritious way, a lot of factors still come into play which may make us relatively nutrient deficient. So one of those to consider is vitamin D. Vitamin D is fairly challenging to get from food alone. The best place to get vitamin D is from the sun. Our skin naturally converts sunlight into vitamin D in our bodies. But depending on where you live, if it's not a very sunny environment or if you're not outside very much, it can be a challenge to get adequate vitamin D through the sun. And that's when knowing your vitamin D level is so crucial because it's easy to measure and it's easy to supplement. A lot of labs list the normal as a level of 30 on your lab test. I recommend somewhere in the 40 to 80 range. So if you get your blood test and it's normal, make sure you know your exact number. And I want you to supplement up to the point of 40 to 80. Of course, talk to your physician too to make sure he or she agrees. But that's usually my general recommendation. But again, even better than the supplements is making sure you're getting sunlight. Even just 20 minutes a day of direct sunlight can be enough to stimulate your vitamin D production. Plus, we know all the other benefits of sunlight with the sleep-wake cycle, with helping with the depression, and just invigorating you and giving you energy. So don't forget, sunlight every day can help on so many different levels. But if you can't get that, test your vitamin D and supplement it if needed. The other supplement I talk a lot about is omega-3 fatty acids. What's fascinating about omega-3s is if you look at hunter-gatherer societies and traditional societies, their ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids is either one to one or at most four to one in favor of the omega-6s. In more traditional, current, industrialized societies, that's gone from 20 to one in favor of the omega-6s. There's one theory that that's responsible for a lot of our inflammatory and chronic conditions. Hasn't been proven, but it's a fairly sound theory. So it's a very good goal to try and reduce the omega-6s and increase the omega-3s. We can certainly do that by eating wild fish. That, that has the highest concentration of omega-3s. We can also do it with nuts, like walnuts, and with certain seeds and flax seeds, uh, hemp seeds, that's other ways to get some of those omega-3s and lower some of the omega-6s. But you may know that wild fish is starting to get more expensive and can even be harder to find in some circumstances. And that's when omega-3 supplements can come into play. I'm a fan of omega-3 supplements, but there's one catch. This is not a place to skimp on quality and price. Omega-3 supplements are a concentration, usually of fish oil. And when you're concentrating the fish oil, you can also concentrate the potential toxins called dioxins or the mercury or heavy metals. So when you're picking a brand, make sure you pick a high quality brand that talks about their biodistillation process. What that is, is that's their process of getting rid of the toxins as they concentrate the supplement that you want, which is the DHA and EPA of their omega-3s. One other supplement to talk about is vitamin K2. Now this one surprises a lot of people, and in a way, vitamin K2 is sort of the new kid on the block, even though it's been around for centuries. It's a vitamin that we can get primarily from egg yolks and in animal meat and protein. Vitamin K1, the most commonly discussed vitamin K, is what you get from the leafy green vegetables. But the K2 is predominantly in egg yolks. So if you don't eat many eggs, that's when you need to think about vitamin K2 supplementation. Vitamin K2 can be very important for bone health and for cardiovascular health. The theory is it helps you utilize calcium in the correct manner. It puts calcium where it's supposed to be, into your bones, and takes it out of where it's not supposed to be, in your vessels. But what's important here is it's in a higher percentage in those proteins or those animals that are raised either grass-fed cows or pasture-raised chickens. That means those that are able to eat grass and, and eat bugs and kind of wander around in their natural diet. And the same for cows, their natural diet of eating grass. When you compare them to grain-fed animals, grain-fed cows and grain-fed chicken, the K2 levels go down. 
So your quality and your source of animal protein is very important when it comes to the concentration of vitamin K2 that you're getting. Since not all of us can eat eggs from pasture-raised chicken or grass-fed cows, that may mean we are relatively vitamin K2 deficient, and that's definitely a time when you want to investigate K2 supplementation. One warning about K2 is if you're on blood thinners such as warfarin, which is a vitamin K antagonist. You should never start any supplement before talking to your physician regardless, but especially if you're on warfarin or a vitamin K antagonist, definitely do not start a vitamin K2 supplement because it can counteract the effects of the warfarin that you're taking. So always, always talk to your physician before starting or stopping any medication or supplement. Vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, and vitamin K2 are three of the supplements that I recommend to most people depending on how you live your life and how you eat. There's a whole host of others and we can get into those more later. But these are the three I want you to start with, to investigate and to discuss with your physician to see if they're right for you.